when we get our ball grain plates, they come usually covered with a paper, and there's two sides to the plate, the front and the back. The back side is the shiny side of the plate, and on that side of the plate, you will um, mark uh, guidelines for cutting the plate um, with a sharpie and a ruler. Fairly simple. Uh, make sure while you do this that you protect the front side of the plate with the paper that it comes with. Um, if you're going to use a plate shear, you can just mark the edges of the plate. When cutting the plate by hand, uh, you should use a steel ruler on a hard surface. Uh, you can use other types of rulers, but the aluminum rulers may be soft and the blade may be uh, likely to go into the ruler and cut your hand. Line up your ruler on the marks you made and score the plate, uh, pressing in lightly three, four, or five times um, with a sharp blade. Just be careful to keep your fingers out of the way and to press down hard on the ruler. Bend the plate up with the ruler on it, then take it to the edge of the table, sharp edge of the table, and rock it back and forth a few times and it should snap off. Avoid doing this on a cutting mat or soft surface as it will bend the plate. For cutting with the plate shear, uh, again protect the, the front of the plate, and I would put the plate uh, face down on the plate shear because of the uh, grippers that will hold the plate in place. They may damage the grained surface uh, of the front of the plate unless you put a barrier in there, like a sheet of mat board. Uh, line up the marks you previously made with the edge of the plate shear, stomp it down, and don't let the plate fall on the floor. Before you use your plate, you'll want to round off the corners just so you don't stab yourself with them and it protects your sponges later. Uh, this is the plate's aluminum, it's pretty thin, so you can just do this with uh, any scissors really. I use hair cutting scissors myself uh, a lot of the time or just any scissors you happen to have handy. So just make a small radius on there, it doesn't have to be very big, uh, like a quarter size would be more than adequate for the rounding of the edge of the plate. Um, after you've rounded the plate edges, make sure that you pick up uh, the little triangles that are left over. Uh, they'll have really sharp points to them and likely will want to stick in you uh, when you pick them up. Um, but especially if people are walking around the studio in sandals or something, they can be pretty nasty. Uh, after that, you'll want to file um, the edges of the plate if while you were cutting it and made a, a kind of raised surface or anything like that. And that edge will destroy your sponges while you're sponging the plate and cause all kinds of problems with ink. So file it from the top, um, kind of like you're filing an intaglio plate. Put a small bevel on it uh, just to take that burr off. Hit the corners, uh, round them with the file a little bit just to take off any sharp edges. And then, uh, like I did before this, you might want to just hit the bottom of the plate if you feel a burr there lightly to take that off as well. So you just want to feel it with your hands after you've um, filed it and make sure that there's no burr along that edge. Uh, just be careful of getting aluminum slivers. Don't run your finger down the edge. Just kind of feel along it and make sure that you've gotten all of that burr off. Um, do that to all four edges. Uh, make sure they're all nice and smooth and that you won't cut yourself on them. Your sponges won't get cut on them. And again, you want to be careful with the surface of the plate. Uh, aluminum plates are very grease receptive. Um, so even the grease from your hands, uh, if you just put your hand on the bare plate, then it will transfer to the plate and come up when you process it later in your drawing. So you always want to keep that um, paper cover on the aluminum plate to protect the surface from scratches, but also from the grease in your hands. So you can see here, I have that paper covered down and I'm using that as the uh, barrier between my hands and the plate while I'm filing the edges. So just go over, uh, make sure you inspect all the edges, especially the ones you cut on and get that burr completely off. Uh, you might want to feel with your fingernail 
along that edge, just run it from the inside of the plate out towards the outside and see if it catches there. And if you have a ridge uh, still, sometimes you can file it and it will take off the burr a little bit and just make a, a blunt raised area. So make sure that you feel that and really got rid of it. Once your uh, plate's cut and you've rounded and filed the edges, you'll just want to make a sturdier paper cover. So I'm just using a piece of newsprint here. Uh, I put my plate face down on top of the newsprint and then just use the edges of the plate as a tear bar. Just be careful as you're tearing to hold the plate down. Um, you can, especially going against the grain of the newsprint, tear your, uh, bend the plate doing this. So just hold the plate in place and do carefully. And once you have the cover torn, uh, just go in with some tape and make sure that you tape it down. And this is a great place uh, to, or a great way to store your plate um, until you're ready to draw on it and counter etch it. Uh, this will help protect the surface from any scratches or any grease that may want to get on it wherever you store it. So just store it in this flat place.